Honourable Senators, it is with deep regret that I inform the Senate of the death on 3 April 2022 of the Honourable James Joseph Webster, a Senator for the State of Victoria from 1964 to 1980. I call the Deputy Leader of the Government in the Senate, Senator Farrell. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr Acting uh, Deputy uh, President. And I think this might be the first time you've been in the chair while well, I've had an opportunity to um, congratulate you on your uh, very fine election. We're taking over. You'll have to be careful. <coughs> you have to watch it. Uh, but look, it's my uh, melancholy duty uh, on behalf of the uh, Leader of the Government in the Senate, Senator Wong, and I seek leave to move a motion relating to the death of uh, Senator the Honourable James Joseph Webster. Is leave granted? Leave is granted. Uh, I move that the Senate records its sorrow at the death uh, on the 3rd of April 2022 of the Honourable James Joseph Webster, former Senator uh, for Victoria and Minister for Science and Environment, and places on record its gratitude of his service to the parliament and the nation and, the nation, and tenders its sympathy to his family in their bereavement. <coughs> Um, so I rise uh, on behalf of the government to express our condolences following the passing of a former senator and minister, the Honourable James Joseph Webster, at the ripe old age of 96. <coughs> As I begin, I wish to convey the government's condolences to his family and friends. Born in Tasmania in 1925, and specifically on Flinders Island in the Bass Strait, James Webster spent his first years there before his family moved to a farm near Melbourne. <coughs> After completing school with two brothers at the war, he remained at home to manage the farm and serve in the Air Training Corp uh, before training in business and accountancy. After gaining some experience in other environments, he would join a timber, hardware, and plumbing business founded by his grandfather that also undertook significant civil engineering projects. As I read the entry for James Webster in uh, the bi bi Biographical Dictionary of the Australian Senate, I was greatly encouraged. Following World War II and prior to joining the family business, he joined uh, a firm of timber merchants and became a delegate to the Australian Timber Workers Union which, if I'm not mistaken, um, <clears throat> was a union that uh, um, Senator Wong once worked for. And I'm just getting a nod. That is correct. Later, he worked as a tally man on the wharves and became a member of the Waterside Workers' Federation, another terrific organisation. Um, and what a sad thing that such a servant of the labour movement has passed away, I thought. So I was shocked to discover that when James Webster first entered the Senate, when he... Uh, filled a casual vacancy in 1964, it was a member of the Country Party. He would go on to serve in the Senate as a member of that party until 1990. I cannot help but think <coughs> the Nationals today would be better served if they had more members from trade union backgrounds. He was, he was also an elder of the Presbyterian Church at the age of 21 the same denomination of which uh, the father of former Labor Senator John Button served as a moderator. But in truth, James Webster had a strong country party pedigree, with his father briefly representing the party in the Victorian Legislative Assembly and joining himself as a member of the Young Country Party. He would later serve as the party's, uh, on the party's Federal Council. Entering the Senate, he spoke of how grateful he was to have the Country Party's support and especially reflected on its policies, uh, and I quote him here, aimed at maintaining a free enterprise community with a minimum of control. <coughs> Given party uh, leader Sir John Blackjack McEwen was the foremost defender of the tariff wall, as Trade Minister now, I found those comments a little surprising. Like so many in his party, he walked both sides of the street. 
speaking about the importance of economic liberalism while staunchly advocating for government support for all manner of projects and schemes. Not much has changed. <coughs> all politics is not. Bringing his business experience to the Senate meant he was interested in economic issues combined with an emphasis on the breadth of Australia's wealth created by primary industries. He spoke about the importance of recognising and supporting this. These latter comments are sentiments uh, I would endorse. When he was born, his father was chairman of the local butter factory, so it was no wonder he lined up against the forces of margarine, which he thought would break the Australian dairy industry. Interestingly, in his first speech, he also reflected on the growing availability of television and the need to ensure the production of Australian content. His support of the Australian film and television industry was something he would continue right throughout his career. He, came, he became embroiled in the coalition opposition's relentless constitutional attacks on the Whitlam government by seeking a High Court injunction to inhibit the joint sitting of both Houses of Parliament under Section 57 of the Constitution that followed the 1974 simultaneous dissolution. The Court did not find in his favour. Later, he found himself in the High Court for reasons not of his choosing, as his ongoing involvement in the family timber and hardware business was called into question after it was awarded government contracts. The High Court would find that his arrangements were not in breach of Section 44 of the Constitution. This was a fortunate outcome for James Webster, not least because he uh, was to become the minister in the, a minister in the Fraser government following Labor's defeat in 1975. James Webster served as a minister for science from 1975 until 1979, just before his retirement. In 1978, the environment was, adding to his, was added to his ministerial responsibilities. He was fortunate to serve at a time at which there was great support within the government and externally for the advancement of scientific and environmental matters. Some of his signature achievements, including multilateral progress in the Antarctic, a place in which he took a strong personal interest. He visited the South Pole on two occasions. Webster Bay, yes, Webster Bay in the Australian territorial section of the continent is named in his honour. He oversaw the restructuring of the CSIRO, having a strong appreciation for its role in supporting rural industry. Kakadu was declared a national park during his time as minister. Whaling was banned in Australian waters. The Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority came under federal control and Prime Minister Fraser placed a ban on petroleum exploration on the reef. The latter resolved an issue that had been the source of some difficulty for the minister and within the government. Concurrently with his time as minister, he was the leader of the party in the Senate, having served as a deputy leader in opposition during the term of the Whitlam government, including, intriguingly, at the same time as he was serving as deputy president of the Senate and chair of committees. Faced with the prospect of a difficult election in 1980, James Webster offered to leave the Senate ahead of the election and became the High Commissioner to New Zealand a post in which he would serve for four years. Uh, James Webster was at times a contradiction, a business person who represented the, Labor, uh, the uh, country party, a farmer who became an environmental minister. Perhaps this is simply an illustration of the importance of a breadth of experience and ability to see different perspectives. This is something we can all take on board as we reflect on his life and service. The government again expresses our condolences following the passing of the Honourable James Joseph Webster, and we again convey our sympathies to his family and those who knew him well. Senator McKenzie. In the Senate Leader's Office of the National Party here in Parliament House hangs a two-metre parchment scroll honouring the service of every National Party senator for the past century. Almost exactly at midpoint on that scroll of five dozen senators is former Senator Jim Webster, who served as my predecessor as a Victorian Country Party senator, the leader of our party in the Senate from 1976 
until his resignation in 1980. Today, the Senate records its deep regret at the death on April 3, 2022, of the former senator and places on the record our appreciation for his service to parliament and the nation and tenders its sympathy to his family in their bereavement. Jim Webster served in the Australian Senate from 1964 till 1980, representing initially the then Australian Country Party and from 1975 the National Country Party. He was Deputy President of the Senate for a period of almost two years, from early 1974 to the end of 1975, including a period as Acting President. Jim was the Minister for Science and later the Minister for Science and Environment for the Fraser government. He's remembered as an enthusiastic minister, relishing the new roles of science and the environment that had not been previously held by the Country Party. His achievements include most notably his work for the environment, for Australia's Antarctic research efforts, establishing the National Marine Science Research Centre in Hobart, and the CSIRO's Australian National Animal Health Laboratory at Geelong, which provided a world-class facility for the safe handling of exotic animal diseases and his support for the fledgling Australian film industry. One of the great achievements of Senator Webster was his work in ending pirate whaling. Uh, often in the National Party and previously the Country Party, uh, as Senator Farrell has noticed and noted, um, what seems like being contradictions is simply challenging stereotypes. And uh, I don't think it's anything unusual for National Party or former Country Party senators to care about their environment and when they have the opportunity as ministers in this place to make um, pragmatic changes to our environmental system uh, and, and uh, efforts. He was uh, instrumental in introduce introducing the Indian Ocean Whale Sanctuary. Green senators, please take note. Uh, we want to achieve actual environmental outcomes, not me merely virtue signalling. I wish to place on the record to the Senate a brief account of Senator Webster's formative years. Jim's family moved from Tasmania to a farm near Melbourne when he was four years old, and later, whilst a student at Caulfield Grammar, he found himself running the family farm whilst his older brothers served in World War II. In what was a clear desire to serve his country, Jim joined the Air Training Corps in Essendon, achieving air crew status. After the war and further study, primarily in accounting, Jim joined a firm of timber merchants and became a delegate of the Australian Timber Workers Union. We love our forestry industry. Stints as a clerk at the log mill and as a tallyman on the Melbourne wharves, where he joined the Waterside Workers' Federation, made for an interesting background which could have put him on a path for a different seat in the Senate. He was an elder at the age of 21 in the Presbyterian Church of Victoria, whilst also active in the Junior Chamber of Commerce and Rotary Club of Caulfield. And he was a member of the West Brighton Club, which amongst its members included one R.G. Menzies. Jim's father had served three years in the Victorian Parliament, and Jim became active in the Australian Country Party, ultimately leading to his nomination in 1964 to fill a casual vacancy in the Senate. Reports suggest Jim was very much reflective of the breed of fresh-faced senators keen to put their stamp on this chamber, becoming a member of many committees and vocal in support of rural and regional areas of Victoria and, more broadly, across Australia. The dairy industry was the focus of perhaps his strongest and fiercest support, with Jim explaining to anyone who'd listen in the margarine industry that seeking to break the Australian dairy sector, that was seeking to break the Australian dairy sector, he rallied against dubious advertising of the margarine industry, such that one Labor senator referred to him as the Honourable Senator for Margarine. Jim had a particular interest in Papua New Guinea, having early been active in the then territory through the national YMCA movement. Jim once sailed a 50-foot yacht from Melbourne to Rabaul and had walked over much of PNG and New Britain over the course of his many visits. He advocated strongly for PNG's independence, but his prerequisite was for a sound economic base to be established before independence. Jim became embroiled in events which ended in the dismissal. He was one of two senators who asked the High Court of Australia to stop a joint sitting of both houses voting on a group of bills that had been the catalyst for the 1974 double dissolution election. 
The bid failed, and with the court ruling that the government of the day could stockpile bills that failed to pass the Senate before proceeding to a double dissolution election. He did survive another engagement over his pecuniary interests um, in the family business and also survived pressure from Liberal members to resign over oil drilling in the Great Barrier Reef. He was also pivotal in ministerial service. Jim also strongly encouraged Australian involvement in Antarctica uh, from a national sovereign interest perspective and backed an agreement negotiated with the United States and New Zealand for a cooperative air transport system to Antarctica. He twice visited bases and the South Pole, and his commitment to the continent is recognised with Webster Bay in the Australian territorial section of the territory being named in his honour. Jim's service to Australia did not end with his time in the Senate. He resigned in 1980 and became Australia's High Commissioner to New Zealand, a position he held for four years before returning to farming and business in his beloved home state of Victoria. On behalf of the opposition and the Australian Senate and the Victorian Nationals, to Jim's loved ones, his four sons and four grandchildren, I extend our gratitude for his service to a thankful nation, a grateful party, our sincerest condolences. I ask senators to join in a moment of silence to signify assent to the motion. The motion is carried.